Today on Bits, we're going to talk about switches. There are a ton of different types of switches and buttons, but they all basically boil down to this. A switch is a component that lets a circuit be opened or closed. And by open, I mean that current cannot flow through it. By closed, I mean that current can flow through it. And of all the different variations, there are only basically two types, maintained and momentary. Maintained means that it stays actuated until you actuate it again. And this is something like a light switch on the wall. It doesn't change unless you go actively change it. Momentary only stays actuated while you are working with it, meaning only while you're pressing down. And most of the buttons that you think of are actually momentary switches. And within those two categories, there are a lot of different ways to actuate those switches. You can press buttons, you can toggle rocker switches, you can use magnets or light there are a bunch of different options. You're just gonna have to find the best one that works for your project. When you go to purchase a switch for your project, you have to make sure you get the right one for the job. And to do that, you need to understand the difference between poles and throws. This is where some of the confusion sets in because you'll start seeing a lot of four letter acronyms that describe how the switch works. And just be aware, this has nothing to do with the number of terminals on the switch itself. It describes the behavior of the switch. Switches always have at least two terminals, one for current to come in and one for current to go out. First, let's talk about the poles. The pole is equal to the number of circuits that the switch can control. The throw is equal to the number of connections that each pole can be connected to. So let's look at some of the possible combinations that you may run into. One of the most common is the single pole, single throw. This is an on and off switch, much like a light switch. Also a momentary button, anything that will open and close a circuit. Next is a single pole double throw. This is basically one circuit with two potential outputs. Imagine a Y in a railroad track, the train has to go one of those two directions every time. Next is a double pole single throw. Now imagine you had two separate light switches next to each other and a bar in between them. If you move that bar up and down, you are moving both circuits opened or closed at the same time, even though they are not really connected to each other from an electrical perspective. Now this can go on and on. You can have double, triple, quadruple, whatever on the pole side and on the throw side. It's all about the number of circuits coming in and their possible connections going out. Next, let's talk about the normal state of a button. Let me give you a couple examples. One would be an arcade button. Nothing happens in your game unless you press the button. But also think about the button that controls the light in your refrigerator. The light doesn't come on until you open the door and the button becomes unpressed. These two states are normally open and normally closed. This is just something to be aware of when you're buying buttons, but there are also some buttons that allow you to choose this behavior. Specifically, a limit switch has three terminals, one for ground, one for normally opened, and one for normally closed. Using these three, you can define the behavior of that specific button. One last thing to keep in mind when you are buying a button is the power rating. Not all buttons can handle the same amount of current. They're usually listed for a certain amperage and a certain voltage. Even though they are super pretty and cool looking, make sure you get the right one for your application or you could burn it out. Buttons and switches are often the only interface you have with your project, so make sure to take the time to get one that does the job well, but also looks really cool. If you've got some more information or insight on buttons and switches, please leave them down in the comments and we can all learn together. Huge thanks to Mortal Kombat 11 for sponsoring this episode of Bits. We've got a whole playlist of other episodes that you may be interested in and we'll be back really soon with a new project. See you then.